Max Wardell, Overhead Athletics here. So I just got done working with some baseball players today, and I wanted to bring to you guys a little patient case. Um, kid that we've been working with for a little bit now, we're noticing that he's too deviated away from the target, a little too extended through his hip too early in the throw. And I've been thinking, we've been doing something that's known as error augmentation, where you actually pull somebody in the direction of their fault. And we've been doing that for a period of time. I actually put up a video on it back about two years ago and just showing one of the techniques that we'd use very simplistically, showing it with a young athlete, huge improvement. And we recently just had a lecture um, from an individual here um, that goes and does air augmentation and gait. And everyone um, that was in the lecture with me was pretty amazed by the, the content, as was I, great stuff, but something we've been doing for a long period of time. And so I thought I'd break out some air aug stuff with one of our throwers, like I said, who goes into too much lumbar extension, doesn't load his hip the way that he can in the throw in the way that he should in the throw. So we're going to go into some videos. I'm going to voice over for you guys. We're going to talk about exactly what we're doing. We're going to show the progression and actually show how he was able to throw and sequence his throw better by the end of the session. And as well as some of the things that he's going to continue to do on his own, that just doing these things on his own will influence his throw in the direction we need to do it independent of whether he uses some air augmentation with bands or or not so enjoy the video guys um, also make sure to hit the subscribe button and if you want to see more videos on throwing mechanics hit the like let's get into the video so right off the bat when we look at this before and after we notice that as this athlete begins to go forward, you can see on the right, which is his after, he's much more forward flexed um, through his spine and le much less upright. And what happens that as he goes forward is on the left that he ends up deviating back into this kind of banana curled position here where he's in a ton of extension. Whereas on the right, just after about 15 minutes of air aug, what we see is that he's more upright. Now we've also been working on improving stride direction simultaneously through knowledge results feedback, which basically means we're giving him an external feedback, which is this here on the ground. He cannot step on it. So we noticed that he was stepping slightly more towards his glove side than we wanted, but really that as he initiated his takeaway and moved towards the target, he did not load through this posterior hip compared to what he did in the after. So this is just a nice little before and after to allow you guys to kind of see one of the one of the things we're working on with this uh, particular athlete, allowing him to have a much more efficient throw. So here's our actual air augmentation. And I'm gonna sync these videos up here to release point just so that you guys have some idea of what we're going what we're doing here. You see these bands are hooked to him. We used yellow because we wanted lighter bands. We got actually a harness on him here. And the initial video we saw that he was too extended and that this hip shoots too far forward while this goes back. Basically he extends through his hip too early and his lumbar spine. What we're doing here with air augmentation is we're pulling them into the direction of the fault. So they actually have to activate against it and teach their body how to move differently. We've, we're adding resistance. We're, we're making them fight against a force. And all of a sudden you see that he's so much more vertical here. If we look at both of these videos, more vertical, we don't see that banana curl as much. So what's going on here with the, these uh, bands? On the left side, this was our initial... Um, application, this band pulling down here is actually pulling down and on an angle forward and it's attached in the middle of his pelvis. So it's trying to pull him into more external rotation and extension of this rear leg hip. Now, what we did as he threw more, we said, okay, he can tolerate that general load. Let's make it a little more specific. And if you look at the band attachment, we attached it more laterally. We attached it more to the lateral posterior pelvis, and we're pulling the band on a bit 
more um, angle up so we're not pulling down as much so we're really trying to pull them into more extension now and additionally what we're doing is with this top band we're actually hooking it to his glove side shoulder pulling him into right rotation um, which for him is actually opening him up because he's left-handed so we're pulling him into more open position so he's actually got to pull against that and close himself away from the target more and you see that he's doing it much better in this video than this video why is that well what we're doing with our attachment here is we're giving it a little bit more force so he's got to pull a little bit harder into left rotation or throwing arm side rotation through his core and through loading of the pelvis then additionally if you watch this band on the left image it stays stationary when you watch this one on the right image we're actually moving it anteriorly so we're actually pulling him into more lateral deviation at the end of the throw because what we notice is that he's deviating off at the end of the throw more than what we felt comfortable with so we're actually giving him a pull into side bending to the right uh, towards his glove side so those are the air augmentation that we used from this static position without a leg lift now we're going to go into what we did a little bit with a leg lift to actually get him to load his hip better following our throws with the air aug from a static position, we actually are having this athlete start from a leg up position and load into the hip as he goes forward, trying to really pull him with this band attached to his back into excessive extension of the spine and trying to pull him into hip extension with this other band. And it's much more difficult to do from that static position. He's much more likely to end up in a position of fault. So it becomes more difficult for the athlete to avoid excessive extension. The body does not like to be uncomfortable. And the body does not like to end up in positions that it cannot safely control. So it will organize itself in such a manner to maintain stability and robustness of the movement. What you see here on the right is that we actually had the individual go from the full stretch position and through the throw, once again adding a layer of complexity and difficulty that the athlete has to solve. Once again, he's got to try to pull his chest forward and he's got to try to load through this hip into hip flexion, internal rotation as he abducts his hip and he's got to maintain co-contraction through all of his core musculature in order to maintain this upright position and an imbalance of co-contraction or a lack thereof will not allow the athlete to stay in proper posture as they rotate which is a key attractor in the throw you have to have postural control as you go through rotation now with this athlete we're just going to know we've worked a lot on getting him into better positioning as he throw better fulcruming of his leader arms and he's doing much much better but now as he continues to progress we're going to refine this a little bit there's still some things we can work on with the arm action but we need to get his body in better position to allow him to maximize his potential velocity. Additionally, we worked on some chaos training where we actually used the aqua ball before this, trying to activate the core musculature, load the gluteal musculature, and get him to go through rotation through his trunk and pelvis prior to even throwing in our warm-up that we individualized for him. Then, following this, he's got to go home with activities that he can continue to replicate and work on his throw at home so that's what we've initiated and that's what i'm going to show you here next now we have here what we might call two antagonistic techniques we're trying to get the athlete to load into his hip and into flexion and internal rotation a little bit better once again we're still using a mat here as an external form of feedback for this athlete to avoid stepping across their body because we know athletes who often step across their body will perform lumbar extension and lateral deviation as a way to get their chest oriented to the target, particularly if they don't have lead hip 
mobility. So what we've done here is we've placed that mat there even with the joint, first joint of the toe and we've had him start in extension. So now he's actually pushed his hips forward and his chest back, position of fault, and he's got to actually initiate into flexion through the hip while simultaneously maintaining core posture as he goes forward. So he goes from extension to flexion as he goes forward. And you see that he maintains a relatively good posture throughout the remainder of the throw. Stride direction is nice because we have the mat there. And then on the right here, what we've done is let's do the same exact activity, but now instead of starting in extension and moving to flexion, you actually start in flexion and you have to maintain that as you move forward. So now he starts in flexion and he's got to stay in flexion actually as he sequences his throw. So he gets into this flex position where he's still loaded through his hip. Then we actually have him go through a more dynamic hop hop drill throw. Now we're on the flat and he's going through what we call our hop hop drill throw where he's dynamically loading the lower extremity bottom up while he's loading top down through the trunk into the throw. This limits his time that he has to complete the throw and the added momentum and inertia of the hops and the added ground reaction force forces him to load into a flex position and actually load into his gluteal muscles as he extends throughout the remainder of the throw. So it's a hop, hop, load, go. As he gets better, he can do it faster and faster these are the three drills that we gave him to continue at home. The start in flexion, maintain it. Then we have him start in extension, move to flexion. And then we give him a hop hop drill to dynamically load the positions and the directions of movement that we want to occur in the throwing motion. Now, if we want to look at his after throw here briefly, what we see is that he initiates with a bit more flexion forward, and this is the same day, keep in mind, and loading through this posterior hip as he begins to go towards the target, maintaining a more upright position throughout the throw, through the trunk, thoracic spine, and postural control. And then as he continues to improve upon this, it'll get even better. So he's got to go home. He's got to practice. We're going to continue to use techniques with this particular athlete. And the end goal being that he continues to replicate a safe and efficient throw throughout his entire career. So Sam's working really hard for us. We appreciate that. And he's got some homework to continue to work on that goes in combination with the stretching protocol and home exercise program that he's got.